Hello folks. So this is not the first time I have carved Kratos, but uh, it's the first time I tried to do a video on him. Now I've taken a lot of inspiration on this carving from a limited edition figurine that uh, the studios released on him. And I like the style of it, but I think uh, changing it up a bit and combining with that Scandinavian style of carving that I like to do, and he turned out pretty well. For those of you unfamiliar with the game, take a look on the right and you'll see the character as he appears in the game, uh, Ragnarok, God of War. We're going to use a 6 inch block, 2 inch by 2 inch for this, can be a larger carving. And we're going to do that uh, totem style that we saw for the limited edition statue. And uh, take a look on the left here, we're going to have an overlay that shows you what we're going for on this. It's the same kind of thing that you've seen from me before, as you can see but we're going to try to keep it simple. We're not going to do anything complicated on the face. It's going to be blocky a little bit. And uh, I think that's going to match the style of carving we're going for quite well. And we're going to use a little bit of red acrylic paint when we get done. And if you trust me, or just take a look at the overlay on the left, you'll see that it turns out pretty well. And it looks good under that black, dark walnut Danish oil. Now on the top here, I'm drawing a cross and a circle to keep myself in line with where the corners of this wood are, where the center of it is, right? And I draw that circle several times because uh, in art class, they teach you that's how you make a perfect circle. If you draw a circle many times, just over and over again, you can erase all the lines you don't need and you can have that perfect circle right there in the middle. So we're gonna use that to guide us for the center of the head. And then we're gonna put in the size of our head and our shoulders here. And remember in wood carving, you can always remove more, but you cannot add more. So leave the shoulders a little bit taller than we would like, and we can remove more to make them shorter if need be. Uh, if we leave the arms a little bit wider, we can remove more to make them smaller as need be. We can adjust how we see fit. So uh, these lines are just a general guide. They don't have to be exact. I'm not even measuring things out. I'm just gauging proportions. I'm going to speed this section up because I messed up the hands a few times when I was designing how I was going to do this. So I'll just get to the finished product and you can see what we decided on. And I put the ax on the ground and there we go. Now with this stylized type of carving, the ax is going to be curved around the base a little bit so it's not going to be flat. And uh, you'll see that more as we go on, but uh, I think that's just fine for this type of carving. It's we got like a Viking totem kind of thing, so I think it's going to look great. Um, along here in the head, we're going to put the eyes right there. With the, with the brow and the nose mustache right there coming to the nose we're gonna have that be nice and blocky and you should still I'll see that overlay on the left and see exactly how this got turn out and there we go now on most carvings especially something like a large one that's six inch by two inch by two inch I take off all these rough edges because they start to really wear and fatigue the hand so I'm just skipping over that now to start with we're gonna take these shoulders out here on the left and right side of the head, sweeping cuts in at the bottom, out at the top. And I got the video sped up a little bit here because this is going to be a larger carving and it's going to take a lot of time and I don't want to waste your time. So to keep this uh, moving along, I'm going to have it sped up on all these just time consuming cuts, right? This is not the uh, detail stuff. This is just roughing out. It's just into the side, out of the top to get ourselves close to the side of the head making sure you leave enough room for ears, hair, and beard, and then uh, check it out, make sure you're even. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And on the side, out at the top, sweeping cuts, nice and easy. And just making that shoulder shelf. And then after we get it swept in, we'll come back in with a stop cut from the top and from the outside, and kind of square that shoulder end to the side of the head. So we got this almost in. Oh, keep checking the top, make sure you're even on both sides and uh, even with where you want the head to be. And then once you get that done, get pretty close there, we can start doing the stop cuts like I was talking about right here. And then come in from the side and start to form that shoulder shelf on the left and right side of the head. And we're leaving these we we'll always want to leave a little bit more wood than you might want to have there. That way you have room to play. You got room to remove stuff as needed, right? With one side done, move to the other side and do the same thing. 
keeping things symmetrical. And just stop cut coming down and then in from the outside and just kind of square that shoulder off into the base of the head where the neck starts. And we can worry about defining the neck more later. Uh, for those who don't know, um, when you see this video, I'll probably be on my way out to Norwood, Missouri. There is a woodcarvers meetup out there with uh, Van Kelly and Roger Stiegel. And they're going to be showing people how they do their caricature, caricature carving. And I'm going to be taking classes with Mr. Stiegel and uh, doing some of his uh, rough outs. It's going to be a lot of fun. The wood carving community as a whole is just a fantastic community. And if you have not gotten involved in any wood carving events in your area or any wood carving groups or clubs, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. Taking classes online and watching YouTube videos is fantastic, but nothing can substitute sitting with somebody and having them show you, hey, try doing a cut like this, or hey, let me show you how to do an eye like this. It is uh, amazing what all you can learn when people show you that, like that. Um, work on the back of the head here, we're just taking out a lot of that e extra wood that's in the back. There's a whole lot here that we can get rid of that uh, we're not getting rid of as much in the front because we've got to have room for the ax, but in the back, we can take out this big hard corner, soften this out immensely. And when you're working against the grain, going like downwards on this carving, you can, or going upward, I should say on this carving, you can split the wood a little bit and kind of use that as a, to your advantage to get large chunks of wood out and then just smooth it over afterwards. So that's what you see with these kind of rough cuts I'm doing. I'm just hogging a lot of wood out here, just knocking out a lot of wood and getting it out of the way so we can move on to the next portion. This is not about detail work at this point. It's just about getting rid of the wood and getting a rough shape for what we're trying to do. Now on this carving, I'm not gonna be using just a knife. I'm gonna be using other tools as well. So I'm gonna grab a uh, number three KCT gouge here. And this gouge is fantastic for doing things like getting a lot of saw marks off really quickly. It's one of the things I use it for. And uh, you can just chip away at that edge and just barely take away any wood at all and just rough that thing up. If you leave the saw marks on wood, um, it takes a stain differently than wood that has met a knife or met uh, a wood carving tool, you know? So to have this have an even finish, we wanna make sure we get all those saw marks off, which is why I go over this thing first with a knife or with uh, this gouge here to clean all that excess stuff off. And then we got a little bit of a chip on the wood there, so we're just gonna fix that real quick with a knife to clean it up. That's why you leave a little bit of extra wood when you're in the rough out phase, that way you can adjust things as needed. So I'll adjust the other side of the shoulder as well to be exactly the same. And then we can start continuing with uh, roughing out. So let's take away these elbows here. On these elbows, we're just gonna stop cut underneath it and then slice up to it to start roughing in the basic shape of the elbows. If, when you saw those drawing on the front of this too, you know, should notice that uh, I left a lot of room on these arms, a lot of room to play with. Now I'm gonna throw the overlay up on the left here. And you might notice the uh, elbows on the overlay are a little bit higher than they are on what we're roughing out. And that's what I'm talking about with leaving a little bit extra so you can adjust as needed. So right now we're just roughing things in. So I'm taking from that elbow down as well and just smoothing that out to be the same basic width all the way up and down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side over here on the left side. And like everything else, take your time to do it right and uh, you won't have any issues. So we got most of that in, it's looking pretty good there. Go ahead and start taking more in here up towards the center of the chest of the arm, just a little bit at a time. And uh, if you take them in smaller chunks like this, it's not as big and beefy as if you try to do it all at once along the whole length of the carving, just kind of go a little bit up at a time. And now right here in the front of the hands, where the hands are going to be. You need to be careful not about going too deep. We don't want to go too deep because they're going to be the, the haft, the shaft of the axe right here. So we don't want to go down too far, but we want to go down enough that we can make a flat plane for the axe so we can round it. So about, what, an eighth of an inch maybe in? You can see right there, not too far in, but uh, just a little bit. And we'll smooth that out as we go down here. Get it smooth right there. And just be careful to not take too much. 
leave plenty so you have room to work. And then we can start taking back up to the arms here, just underneath there, going up to it, stop cut the arms to pull those chips out, add a little depth and definition to the bottom of the arms, and being careful not to take out too much from the hat of that shaft. We're gonna go ahead and redraw that shaft in so you can be mindful of it, right? Keep track of it, know where it's at, because you don't want to get it any deeper than it is right now. And I'm doing, yeah, just drawing it on. There we go. So that's going to work out for us. Let's do the top of the hands now, right there. And this is a lot wider than the hands need to be because we're going to do a, a, a pattern of the hands coming together on top of the half. So take a look at the overlay on the left. All of that action with the, one, the left hand on top of the right hand is all going to be done inside of that block that we're leaving for the hands. We're leaving a lot of room there to do detail work afterwards. We're just blocking in this large chunk to leave alone for it. So. Now I'm just taking off a little wood off the front here, the face. We want to get that face pulled back a little bit. So taking these rough areas here, saw marks off as well while we're here. And I don't I'll start taking off the bottom there, but that was wrong grain direction. That was going to cut real deep. We don't want to do that. So I'll take these saw marks off down here as well. Smooth that out with this KCT number three. So I don't have to worry about that. We'll get those saw marks off here as well. We're not gonna go too much deeper here. So I want those saw marks gone. So depending on how deep we go, we can easily not have to deal with them. Get those saw marks off the left and right arms and shoulders now so that they're just gone and out of our way. We don't have to think about them. And we just take wood off as needed. Uh, if we get too much detail in here, it'll be really difficult to get all these off later. So doing it now when you're this far in the process is probably the time to do it. Just get that whole base of the wood all roughed up with a knife or with a, some kind of cutting implement. And then you can clean it up more later. All those chips bother me. I always got to push them out of the way. All righty. So we've got uh, that done pretty well so far. Don't be afraid to <clears throat> grab your pencil and go ahead and redraw lines wherever needed. And while we got the pencil out, we're gonna go ahead and uh, draw some straight lines along this base here and about yay high up because the bottom is gonna look more like a totem, like showed in that overlay. We have straight lines coming down here. So I'm gonna do a straight cut, straight in like so and like so along the top of the arms, blocking in more room for the arms than we need because we're gonna go fairly detailed on the arms. Take a look at the overlay on the left. Since that overlay is out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them up for a while while we go ahead and keep roughing out this top section here. And we're just getting rid of some of this wood that we know we don't need. We're gonna be leaving enough here. We can do details later because we're gonna be adding in uh, shoulder strap and uh, the red stripe that he's well known for. Um, just a nice smooth cut. Man, remember, you got your stop cut there. You don't want to have the tip of the knife blade going past that stop cut, but it's right up to the edge. So just be careful about where that blade goes, and you'll have less to clean up afterwards. And just keep moving stuff along the front here, chipping it out like that. And you may have noticed that uh, I'm not recording the audio the video live while I'm actually carving, carving those corners off. I do that afterwards because while I'm carving, my kids are coming up to me asking me questions. They're talking to me about various things. And uh, my house is always loud. Just uh, taking off some little stuff here, starting to shape the face and the beard area a little bit more so I can see where I need to be moving wood. Find that a bit more underneath that right arm and take away a little bit of that there. And we're just gonna keep doing this, like deepening some of these lines here, especially along the bottom of the arms. We need to get more of this out of there, but we wanna make that base nice and round, keeping it kind of the same distance around. And we'll take a look at the bottom uh, as we get to that point. Let's work on the top of the head here rounding off that top of the forehead and the back of the head here and start to clean up those rough saw marks on the top of the head. Um, be careful here. Uh, you want to 
around the head, but not too much too soon. Again, leave some extra wood to have room to go in as you need to. We're gonna put some ears on here and add some definition to the brow. We just want mostly get the saw marks off and start to round it over that way it's not as blocky. Like so, using that paring cut there to kind of come back towards you. Keep that thumb out of the way and you won't have any issues. Okay, now just take that front of the hands, rounding that off a little bit. And uh, this is another detail knife I like to use. It's one I got from Beckwith Forge, like a, a goat's foot kind of shape. I like using it. It lets me get real deep into places. And we're going to start to do the, uh, the axe with this one. And you could use a detail knife or a rough out knife. If you're using a rough out knife, just kind of choke up on it a little bit and uh, use the tip of it more for this. And uh, we'll get this penciled in. Sorry, I'm doing a little bit out of, <coughs> out of camera there, but uh, it's just, you can see the axe shape right there we're going for. We're just going right down to the axe head here. And then we're gonna go on the other side of the axe head. And then we're gonna take out this section here. Stop cut the end. Stop cut under it, like so. Just tracing out the axe. And then we'll remove some of the wood here and get some depth around that axe to give it some shape. There we are. You'll notice on a lot of my knives, <clears throat> I've got hash marks on the, on the spine, where the spine of the blade is, and that's to help me index the knives a little bit more quickly. Um, some of my knives look very similar and they might have a, a straight blade or an upsweet blade. And if I'm not paying attention, I want to have that, that, uh, those hash marks. They help me index the knife a little bit quicker and not put my thumb into a sharp blade. If you've already done that, you know better. All right, and just, we're gonna carve out. Make sure you pay attention to the wood grain here. I started one direction, but I decided to go the other direction because it would have split more than cut. And uh, just smooth it out. Get a little depth in there. When you're cutting up to your stop cut, make sure your blade doesn't go past the stop cut, just right up to it. And pull all that excess out everywhere you can. Easy as you go. And if you, like I did there, you can see I uh, cut a little bit past it when I was doing the outline, but that's okay because we're gonna be taking away most of this stuff here. On the rough out stage, it's okay to make mistakes. Even later, it's okay to make mistakes. Just uh, fix them. Don't get fed up with your carving and throw them to the side and be done with them. I have found that some really great carvings I've done, some, some carvings I'm really proud of, I should say, are ones that I hated halfway through. And usually, even in this carving, uh, about midway through, I'm like, man, he's turning out terrible. I don't like him at all. And then you get finished and you're like, you know what? He's pretty neat. I really like the way that turned out. Just stick with it until you get done and it's all just practice you know the, the better you get the more time you spend develop skills that you didn't have before and it's all a journey learning to get better and that's what I'm doing as well just like everybody else so you'll see me bouncing around too with different knives here because I like to use different knives for different areas so I was using an upsweep knife now I'm going with a straight blade for this other side here to pull that section out. I might use an upsweep blade to get into an area that uh, a straight knife can't to get into as easily. Depending on the angle you have to have your blade in, like if you're coming in from the side, that upsweep allows you to angle the knife handle back more and keep that blade away from other things that might be in the way. So it's nice to have the option, but you don't necessarily have to have a straight blade or uh, an upsweep blade. You can have one or the other and make it, make it work. You'll be able to figure it out as you pivot your carving look at different angles just uh yeah but having more knives <laughs> is a problem a lot of wood carvers face they, they wind up getting more and more tools more and more tools as they go and i'm just one of those folks doing the same thing now i'm rounding out the uh the axe haft here you don't want to take too much wood off of it because we want to have this thing popping out a little bit more we want to round it some right it's gonna be a big thick axe handle that he's got a hold of and it'll end underneath his right hand at the top. All right, just taking out some more wood underneath those arms because as you get more into the ax, you can see we need more of this out of here. And 
Use your judgment. Look at your carving. Let your carving tell you where you're going to be taking wood away from. That's always the best course of action. Take a look at that bottom to judge where else you might need to remove wood from. And again, I got a bit outside of the camera angle there, but I pull it back up pretty quick. Take out the little bit of wood right there. A little notch. The more depth you get to these kind of things, the more shadow you get, the better the carving will look. Looking fantastic. And we'll round that axe blade off a little bit later, but you can see this axe itself is kind of rounded al along the carving here, this round carving, right? And that's okay. That's that's the way these types, this style looks, and that's just fine. All right, so we're going to work on the face here. We're going to draw this back in center line here for our face and we're going to bring the brow in about like so angle down because he's a angry looking fellow and i'll put a nose in right about there about the middle of the face with mustache coming down angular kind of like a blocky looking face here and we're going to go for this face is going to be more of a flat plane style and most of it is kind of flat plane style but uh yeah, that's looking pretty good. And we'll get some depth to this beard here, start there, and stop cut under the bottom of the beard and straight in, and then carve up to it. We're going straight in. We're not going up underneath the beard yet. We're just going to go dig in straight in to create some depth, and we'll angle it kind of up and in after we get a little bit more depth to it first. Work those corners up too, the left and right side. We're gonna keep this kind of thing angular, and he and he does have an angular beard in the game like that. He's a very harsh character, gruff looking. But that's a that's a good shape to start with, and we'll work on bringing this neckline in here, around the right, around the left. I like having the beard blocked in more before I start doing a nose because then it helps me know that yes, this is the right spot for a nose. This is the good spot to put it because it's about the right part of the face. We're going to go right here. Nice deep stop cut and cut up to it straight in. And uh, we want to keep, try to keep it level if we can. And we want to get some good depth like so. And then we're going to carve that brow back a bit more. Angled back. And we'll put the eye shelf in. A little bit farther back. Do a cut on each side here for the nose right side first and we'll go in straight in but angled slightly to the left and slightly to the right for each side of the nose and then we'll come in here with our brow line like that and our eyes are just going to be sunken in that provide shadow so we do a sweeping cut in straight in like this to our two stop cuts and we'll get some depth going there and you can see on the uh, overlay on the left that shadow it creates gives us a good look for those eyes so we're going to take these cheeks out afterwards, flatten them out to the same plane the other side of the nose is. And then we'll get some more depth in on the eyes after we get that done. But uh, just take a little bit of time. You don't take it all out at once. A little bit of time. Whittle away at it. Take your time. There's no rush. What else are you doing today, right? And then let's get some more depth on that eye. So we're going to go back in with our stop cuts and then angle it a bit more, a bit deeper. So it kind of slopes up into the eye. Look at that shadow right there. That's fantastic. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Stop cut and then a stop cut again. And then we'll bring that sharper angle in right there to create some depth to that eye. And you can tell that that's not quite deep enough already. So we're going to do it again. A little bit deeper. And cut that out. That's fantastic. That's the shadow we want. So. Now we can work on the rest of the nose. We can uh, do a little slice underneath each corner and take that corner off to round out this nose. And this will be a blocky nose, right? So we're gonna use a V gouge on the left and right side to create some notches in it too if we smooth out those rough corners and take those little chips away, knock those off, clean it up a little bit. There we go, now let's get a little V gouge here Put a notch on the left and right side. Give that nose some character. Like that. Looking pretty good. All right, so let's uh, take out the top of this nose here. Like put an angle to it down to the brow. 
and then smooth that brow out, round it off a bit. He's starting to get some more shape. Let's take the left side and the right side of the face off, round him out a bit more. And the more we work this head, the more we'll see where we need to remove wood from, right? Because right now his head is too wide, it's too fat, and we'll keep taking wood away from here or there as we see where we need to take it off from. I'm just putting stop cuts here in on the beard. We're gonna do a nice V cut like so into the mouth area. Get it deep and you can provide that shadow that looks so great. And some V cuts here on the cheeks. Coming in and down to the top of the mustache and then in and down to the top of the mustache on the other side. Uh, give us a, a cheekbone right there above it like so I'm gonna take more off each side there and when you're doing that on a face do one side and then the other and then you kind of keep those cuts mirrored so like those V cuts let's define that cheek a little bit more I'll do the same thing over here define that cheek a little bit more with a V cut going there so we define the top of that beard and that cheek like so do that a little bit better and that's doing better and we'll work that up here towards the ear, we're going to place it. Just take your time, a little bit at a time. Deepen that mouth and bounce around like, look at your carving, where do I need to carve next? All right? I'm going to round this head off more as I bring it in. in. The back of the head, and we'll need to fix a lot in the back of the head. We need to bring the base of the back of the head in a little bit. We'll do that in a bit top of the head needs to come in anyway some folks just stand to have uh, their wood chips everywhere but i gotta push them over a pile every now and then stop what i'm doing to fix that all right so the back of the neck here obviously it comes in right if you look at the back of someone's head you'll notice that from their shoulders it goes into the back of the neck and then out from there to the back of their skull so we're going to bring shoulders up here and bring the back of that neck down into them a little bit add some depth here curve that in Look at it from the side. Does that look like the back of someone's head? And then do a little bit more right there. So we need to do a little bit more on this side here. And just keep moving a little bit at a time and taking a look at it to see how you're doing. There we go. And try to do the same thing on, this, on the other side as well. Try to mirror what you do on each side. Right now I'm trying to thin out the face, take away some of this wood that I don't need, and then we'll put our ears in. Take some more of the back of his head off. This head is too blocky at this point. We're just bringing it down in shape. It's starting to look more like what we want. Let's bring out some more depth underneath this beard. And keep adjusting where you need to. Take a look at your carving. And I said this too many times already probably in this video I'm doing the same thing over and over again we're gonna draw these ears in right here so a simple ear and we'll use a gouge to kind of sweep into it to put some definition to it bring the beard up to it verify where you are from one side to the other try to keep things symmetrical right we'll define that beard we'll put a lot of depth in behind that beard too because we want to have it really pop We're using a detail knife here nice sharp detail knife to Continue that V cut along the top of the cheekbone, along the top of the beard, the bottom of the cheekbone, top of the beard, all the way over there. The face is one of the areas that people's eyes are most drawn to, so take your time. Slow and methodical. Remember, this video is right now is at 2x speed, so these cuts are happening slower than you see here. I'm using this really thin detail blade because it, uh, it lends itself better to small, precise cuts like these sinks in deeper easier so i can get this little v cut here behind the beard like so quite easily we'll use it to provide a little depth there too right there on the neck right here just bring that along the edge a little bit we'll do the same thing on this side it gets real deep real easy because it's so thin i'll we'll take that chunk out stop cut the bottom to chip it out and bring that neck in there along the shoulder here with that and you can use a thicker knife to do this, it's just more difficult. I have a 
two detail knives I use most often. This one with this really thin blade. And one with a thicker blade, and I'll show those to you here in a moment or two. This is the, uh, the other one, and it lends itself more easily to slicing off chunks like this, which is why I grabbed it. It's a detail blade as well, but it's thicker. You can see here that the spine of it is quite a bit bigger. And they both have their uses. And you can use either one for all of these things. This one is much more V-shaped. Look at that blade, it gets thicker to the back. And this one's very, very thin. So for fine details, I use one. And for getting out large chunks of wood on smaller areas, I use this other one. And you can just use one blade. You don't have multiple blades, again, I just prefer having lots of options when I'm carving. So just taking off this wood here in the back of the head to bring the back of the head in more because the back of the skull rests a little bit higher in the back and the back of the neck comes down to the shoulders like, like that. Looking much better. And they'll provide more, more depth to the neck. More roundness to the back of the head here. It will take a little bit more off that back of that head too, not the back of the neck, but the back of the head's gonna, gonna start poking out a little bit there. Take that off like so. And that's looking a lot better. That's the back of a head, that's good. Get those wood chips out of the way again. Now we can use this finer detail knife. And I can pencil in or draw in this ear more easily. And this thinner blade sinks into the wood a little bit easier so it's better for this kind of detail work and I'll just cut down to that we'll provide some definition to those ears I'll do this on both sides of course and once we do that and get some definition in the ears we can come back in with a, uh, a gouge like maybe a, a smaller number nine scoop to scoop out the ear and just provide a little bit of detail and you can see that in overlay on the left side nothing too detailed right we're, this, this is going for like a Viking totem style. And the Vikings were like, they did really great carvings. When it came to figures, they were, they were simpler, right? And I want a simple style carving for this. I this kind of bookshelf, you know, he's gonna look neat. It's gonna have this Kratos vibe. But I don't want it to be really detailed. Like, like I do the, the mushroom guys I do. This is different. So get a little more detail in the back of the neck there, bringing it in. I'm using the smaller knife for that because doing thinner cuts, thinner slices, not removing a lot of wood. And carving in that ear, just pushing that knife blade along to draw that out first and then cutting up to it, right? Tip of the blade going right up to the stop cup and not past it. If it goes past it, you can go past it, but uh, it'll just look like a ugly cut you have to clean it up so best practice to get good at cutting right up to your stop cut line and then pulling things out there we go take this excess off the top of the head there as we provide that depth of the ear just a little bit too far out and keep rounding things off as you go as you take more off around the ears you realize okay i need to take more off the back of the head or i need to take more off here to make that look right proportionally and that's looking a lot better. We're going to take a little bit more off that top of that cheek on this side and that side. Bring that in. And just bounce around. Make sure you do both sides for whatever you do. Kind of curve. Kind of sweeping cuts here along the top of the head from the brow. Because the brow doesn't just end at the top of the head. We want to have it kind of sweeping up and over the top of the head. Now we got the ears we can still do, but a little more detail right there. Take this stuff out. There's some dirty cuts here, right? Well, I didn't quite get as good as I wanted to. Clean those up right now. All right, I think it's looking pretty good. More depth. More depth there. And just taking our time. Smooth those things out as you go. Some more wood up the back of that ear. You can, you can see in the video here, that's clearly too much wood behind the ear. And we're just going to keep taking it out. 
adjusting as needed. Looking at the face again, where else do I need to work? Where else do I need to work? If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you folks. Um, don't forget to like or comment on the video. Let me know how I'm doing. What would you rather see from me on these? What else do you need to hear from me? And uh, what kind of carvings do you want to see? Put all those comments down below and let me know because if I don't get encouragement, I might stop doing these. But so far, I've been getting a lot of encouragement and I'm going to keep going. All right, so a V-gouge, not V-gouge, a U-gouge just to scoop into and out the back of the ear. Nice and easy. Just that little bit of detail. Nothing crazy. And then I'll use this detail knife to round out those ears a little bit. Round out the top and the sides and the back of the ears. Smooth them out a little bit. And you can see that, 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 that uh, scoop is just a scoop out of the ear, right? Just into it right a little bit, a little bit before the ear and then right out at the back of the ear. Leaving a little line around the edge of the ear. Nothing complicated. Nice and easy. And it would be rather hard to do that with a knife. Um, now we're rounding off the back of that beard. Just a little bit there and there. And uh, a little depth there. To the other side as well. Just like that. There we go. And then we take a look at the carving. And uh, the left side here is a little bit too thick. So we're going to go ahead and round that off. And if you look at the bottom, you can see it's just too far out. Get some chunks off that like so. Make it look a little bit better. And then we'll reevaluate where we need to work next. And uh, we need to do the shoulders here, round those out a bit more, they're looking too blocky. A little bit off each side. And we're going to put a pauldron on the left here. Before getting too in depth on that, though, it's clear I need to take away a lot of extra wood in this back. He looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame right now. So we're going to take a lot of wood off here. So I go back to the rough out knife. And I'm just hogging out some wood. So now that we've gotten more into this carving, get this head shaped and uh, sized appropriately, we can see how much more wood we need to get out of there. So use your judgment on what you might need to do. And to keep his back straight rather than bowed, we'll take some of this wood out in the bottom as well. This is where, like I've said before, you just look at your carving and use that to judge because you can see clearly what you might need to do on the carving you're making versus what I've done rather than following just cut by cut because every cut might be a shade deeper, a shade shallower than what I've done. So you got to be able to use your judgment on what you might need to do. That's looking a lot better. Now we're going to pencil in our pauldron. I'm going to put two overlays up on the left, one of the front side of the pauldron finished and one on the back side of it. That way you get an idea of what we're doing here because the shoulder is a little bit too sharp right now. And uh, we're going to carve in the outline of the whole pauldron and then chip out the stuff underneath it, kind of coming up to it. The shoulder should go up, up underneath this, right? So we're going to chip up to our stop cut there all the way around this. And then we'll add the lines on the pauldron so it looks like it has layers with the uh, the bottom side of being under the, the one above it and so on and so forth up it for three layers. And we'll probably round out the pauldron a little bit more because it's kind of sharp with an angle there as well. So yeah, right here we're going to round this all off right there. That looks a little bit better. Leather pauldron shouldn't be blocky too much and then we'll take that end off like that and now I'll just draw a couple lines here for the lines of the pauldron and we'll stop cut those and then cut up to them from the base the top one first and then come up to it nice and easy and then do the one below, below it as well Clean that up a little bit. Right here. One stop cut along all of it. And then that's be much. Just a little bit to add that definition and detail. That'll be fantastic. Alright, brush that off and let's take a look here. I think we're gonna start working on the hands here. And I'll pop the overlay up 
here on the left zoomed in a little bit so you can see what we're going for with this fella's hands the arms are going to come down like so and you can see we block this in, in a larger area right we left us a lot of wood to play with so we can adjust the hands as needed and get the detail in here now i find it's easier to work that way and we can adjust where we're going to put uh, the elbow or the wrist have that kind of like that have the hand folded along on top of that half of that axe and we'll clear all this section here out and a little bit under there but leave the axe haft going up underneath the right and left hand now let's go ahead and start taking out all this excess we don't need anymore and you can see where that is pretty clearly there and uh yeah we'll start with this thicker detail knife we'll stop cut on one side stop cutting the other along the bottom and then we'll chip it out a little bit at a time and you don't chip it out in one big piece but you can try that take a little bit of half of it if you want to like so and if it doesn't come out the first time do the stop cuts again and it'll just pop out if it doesn't stop cuts again slide underneath it again and then pop it out like this it's not wanting to come so take a little bit less stop cut it pop it out take your time this is when we're getting closer to uh what the final product gonna look like so it'll be a little bit more gentle here taking out a little bit less at a time and putting depth only where we're like yep that spot where i need depth i want to put depth there so there we go and that gives a little shape to the top of the arm and the wrist going up on top of the haft of the axe now we'll take out along the bottom of that and along the top of the rip the, the forearm i should say a little curvature to the bicep right there same on this side a little curvature if we can and bring it over to the arm not too much just a little bit so we'll stop cut again drag that cut along there sink the knife in here and there we should be able to take a little chip out we we'll do this side a little bit differently All right we're going to take a little bit in and then go deeper and then go deeper you don't do it like we did on the last one you can cut like this if this is easier for you however you get the wood out you do you you know very carver from what i've seen in videos and online is a little bit different in the ways they like to do little things like this all of them have different eyes they use or different Nose are different styles of mouths. So everyone carving a little bit differently. Learn from everybody. Don't just watch a video from me. Watch a video from, from Doug Linker and Dolo, uh, Alex Cass, Lucas Cost, Halfling Carves, Cousin Jack. There are all kind of folks making videos out there. More than enough content. So take a look at all of them. Learn from everybody. Then come back to me because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're just going to round off <clears throat> that elbow there and we're just forming these arms a little bit at a time into the shape that we want put a little more detail into the top of that bicep along that curve we drew round out that thing and a little crease there in the corner of the elbow Round out the top of that forearm. Pay attention to your wood grain and uh, make sure you're carving in the right direction for that piece of wood in that section so you don't tear wood and have big chunks come off. Can't really afford that at this point. And that elbow's a little bit too high, so we're going to bring it down. We have plenty of wood here so we can adjust as we need to to make sure that we're in the right spot and looking proportional. Getting hands right is difficult. And uh, you should take your time on it. I am still learning. I am by no means a master carver. I am just sharing my journey and the carvings that I do because it's fun. And I'm trying to encourage more people to try their hand at it. But uh, these hands aren't perfect. And I'm getting better at it every time I do it. So I'm just showing you the way that I do them. And uh, I like the set of the wrist here on this kind of thing. I think that I've got that down for how a wrist should look but my fingers need more work 
you know, see how I do them and take a look at that and see if you like the way I do them, do them the same way. If you want to do it differently, try it differently. But uh, this is all a learning experience, you know? Taking just a little bit out of time right here in this angle, stop cut left and right, and then just slicing little chunks out at a time. You don't take out the whole block. Don't take out more than you need to. Just a little bit of time. And we'll take out the bottom of that forearm there. We take bigger chunks there because it's straighter, easier to cut. Wrap right the arm. And it's starting to really take shape here. And once we get more shape into it, we can start curving those arms out. And I can see already that uh, my, my right arm isn't looking proportional. That elbow comes down the wrong, wrong kind of angle. So we can try to adjust that here in a moment. After we get some more of this detail out here on this axe half. Because now the axe half is coming up more towards the hand than where we had it. And uh, round those corners out there a little bit. And we'll start to find the bottom of uh, the left hand here, which is going to rest on top of the axe haft. To find the bottom just a little bit. And then we'll do the top of the bicep on the right into that elbow and curve that down, round out that bicep. That's looking a lot better. The forearms in the same way, and the bottom of the forearms back into the elbow, up to the wrist. And clean up all those cuts, right? As you do stop cuts and then slice cuts down to them, those edges can wind up looking kind of rough. Just uh, shave them off, clean them up, make them look better. Now we're going to fix that elbow over here on the right arm, bring that up a little bit higher make it look more proportional with the rest of the body with the arm doesn't look too long and that'll work out just fine for us i'm thinking about doing some larger carvings like this of uh the, the knight and the dwarven warrior if you want to see that just uh say something down below and that might be something i put a priority on if not i think i might do a fat bottom mushroom baby next all right so just work on defining that arm round out those corners now to be repaired there where that elbow was and uh yeah i think he's looking pretty good clean up some of these cuts in various spots take out some of this excess wood if you see it curves down in too much you want to smooth it out especially along the, that base section there all right so we've got uh this shoulder strap that needs to go in next we're going to pencil that in it's going to go right across the chest down here under the left arm. And we're just going to define that. And we're going to put in that line, that red strap he's got on his body, the red paint, right? We're going to carve that in. Put a little bit of definition to it here. And it comes on his face, down to his cheek, kind of angled the left up his face, and then Back to right over the top of the head. Come right over the top, like that with the line, right down to the back of the head, and under the back of his tunic top, right? Which is gonna be held up by that strap in the back. This red mark comes over the shoulder, around the shoulder, and wraps to a point on the left front of the shoulder. So we need to have a tunic that comes from the elbows. That elbow's a little low on the, look at that, that's, that's, that's too far low. We need to fix that elbow on the, on the left as well. So we got that tunic back and a piece of fabric hanging down. And then we'll put a belt, not a belt, just a, uh, it's the line for the top of that totem portion there. On the bottom there right up underneath the arms a line here for that bottom again darken that so we can see it easily and then we can get started on this portion we'll have these vertical marks coming down here in the bottom of the of the totem area like like so and uh that'll look pretty good i'll have some details of the straps on the top but let's go ahead and start with we'll finish up the <coughs> red paint marking on him right there and uh, 
we'll do some detail on that strap in the top we'll start with that strap let's do that the detail knife the thin blade and we'll just trace that line out from top to bottom and do the top as well and then we'll cut down to them to allow this strap to be a bit further out than the rest stop cut along the top and we'll chip out without that and just little cuts this isn't going to be out too far it's a piece of leather so we're not going to have it come out crazy distance and where this isn't an exact replica of what kratos looked like in the game this is a stylized representation so this strap doesn't have to look exactly like what kratos might look like now here i'm grabbing a skew right well, it's a little detail knife straight flat kind of like a, a screwdriver to get in that corner and uh i like having different tools for different purposes having everything you might possibly need those tight areas sometimes you might enjoy having the right tool for the right purpose so that's why i use this skew to try to get in here but this one's a little bit too wide for that portion we use a smaller one it's just flat blade at the end of it straight flat blade i kind of used to push in there like that this is a dockyard tools micro gouge i was using there i've got a good set of those and they're like 15 bucks a piece easy to get a hold of on ebay or on various whittling sites now we're going to draw these lines here for that red stripe we're not going to take much wood out on these either <clears throat> not much at all this is just uh to define that red stripe that's painted on his body a little bit right so we don't need to go deep just a little bit to set it off and then when we paint it and then black walnut stain over the top of it it'll really make it pop and I easily identify who this character is People will know, oh, that's supposed to be Kratos. That's easy to tell for those who know the, the character at least. There we are. A little paring cut to get that angle just right. And bring that line around. And just take your time when tracing these lines. On all of us, take your time, of course, but slow and steady wins the race. Low and steady. Get that point to it. And just a straight cut in to trace that out. See, I'm usually holding the knife still and rotating the carving more because it's easier to maintain control of the knife that way and keep from injuring myself. So, something I would suggest you do the same. Keep control of the knife and make your cuts that it's easy to stay in control of the knife rather than cutting wildly. Some folks use the carving glove as a crutch to keep themselves from getting hurt and just carve a little bit too wildly. Whereas if you don't have a knife, you might be far more careful. And that's my philosophy. Be more careful from the beginning. And we're do the same thing here in the back of the, back of the head and back of the neck with that red line coming up from the back, just barely taking a little bit of wood out all the way down to where this tunic top is gonna to be. And I'll take a long tunic top as well. We can define that a little bit more deeply than the red line, because that red line is supposed to be paint on skin, and this is cloth on his back. So we can define this a little bit more deeply and not have to worry about how it looks. I'll take out a little bit more on the back there because after taking on those V-cuts, it started to look too thick. Take your time to find the right angle. And then uh, go ahead and carve, again, a straight line on this high and just kind of hanging down. And then we'll just barely take a little wood out to define it. And you could use a V-tool and just trace this line. That would work just fine too, probably. It'd probably look just, just as good as this. I like doing it with a knife, so that's why I'm using the knife. But you can do it how you want to. If you're carving, make it your own. Change something up. If you want to add something else, this guy, you want to add hair to him? <laughs> you, maybe you don't want to make it Kratos. Maybe you want to make it someone else. Add a little hair, right? Add whatever you want to. 
take those pencil marks off, those red marks, and smooth them out so it's kind of rounded on the edges there. I'm going to do that all along the length of these paint marks. And as we move to the front of the carving here, we're just doing the same thing. Just taking out a little bit at a time here and there, bringing this paint line down under the strap of the leather. Remember, this is a line of paint and it's going to go on the skin and the leather strap is going over that. So you want to make sure you V cut the paint line down into the strap. Take your time. We're getting in tight places like this around the neck too. Um, tight spots like that, if you're not careful, are easy to get yourself cut on. And use that brush periodically to wipe things clean so you can see what you're doing. Yeah, and just keep taking your time while you define those lines. And this one knows plot to use that skew to carve down in there and then snip it out. I like using these various tools too to Show you guys how I might use them in a situation like this little corner cut here on this elbow, that skew. And it might inspire you to be like, oh, maybe I should get that tool for myself. All righty. In that idea, let's go ahead and use a V gouge to carve the back of these arms for the elbows. Oh, we talked about that elbow being too far down, but let's go ahead and fix that now. We'll cut a lot of this out here. That was too much meat. That left elbow was down much too far. So we'll bring that back up and then we'll curve it back out. That way it can be somewhat some more symmetrical than we had them. As long as you got more wood left, you can take out more to correct. And odds are you always have more wood left than you think you do. That you can take out to correct. Just make the carving a little bit smaller maybe, or make that part a little bit deeper. All right, so we're looking pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these cuts here a little bit. Get rid of those hard lines, those rough cuts. And then we can start working on defining the rest of this elbow here, back of the arm. Kind of cut up to that a little depth to the back of the arm there. That way it doesn't look like it's just in the body, but coming over to the body. Just define that deepen the cut a little bit to put some shadow in there back of the elbow he's really starting to come together take a look at the bottom of your carving to see how cylindrical he is and adjust as needed don't worry about removing pencil lines we can always put them back in and then uh, we'll go ahead and start defining the top of this little totem base for him just Stop cut straight in and then carving down to it because the body is going to kind of go into that base, right? You can push the knife in and roll it around the body if you need to, or you can just push in and do the next part, push in, do the next part. By the way, these are easy little cuts. Just knock them out, take your time so we don't mess anything up. And uh, we'll do the same thing along the base here as well. As we finish up the top, like so with that done let's go ahead and start putting our stop cut in along the base of this so I'll push in here and work that line all the way around all the way around the base of the carving here going from the half to the sh the uh, axe on one side, all the way to the other side. And once we get that done, we'll kind of carve right down to it. And this base is jutting out a little bit from the level above it. And just take those chips out all the way around.
And you can see the, uh, the section I took out here, which is a little bit too of a sharp incline. So we're going to go ahead and smooth that out a little bit all the way around the base. That way this interior section of the base doesn't look misshapen. It looks straight more, right? Clean that line up as best you can. Now we're going to add a little rim around the top of this portion here to trim this out. Just putting a stop cut in all the way from one side, wrap it around all the way to the other, and then we'll cut up to it on this one. So that this little band here pops out. It'll be the top of the totem area and kind of like a belt as well, kind of mixing the two as we transition from the the totem style figure to the, the totem base. So it can be a little bit thicker here. You can take out a little bit more along the bottom or the top of it to make it look a little bit thicker. And we'll smooth it out and maybe put some detail on it. Make it pop like so. Now because we're doing so many V cuts, into the top and the bottom of this, we're gonna go ahead and flatten out this middle area a little bit still. Between these two, top and bottom of the uh, the, trim, the base here, we wanna have this mostly flat if we can. So we'll just kinda of smooth this out. Take our time. Try to pay attention to your wood grain direction. The wrong direction, you wanna to pull out too much. All right, let's start rounding out this bottom edge here, smoothing it out as it goes up. You can do that like so, with the tip of the blade along that edge, which I think is probably the easiest for me. Or you can just chip up from the bottom, however you want to do it. Clean up this edge here, make that a little bit deeper along the top here before we start doing the rest of the belt. Just keep looking, you know, spend a few moments cleaning things up, adding more depth. What do you think? Okay, I need more depth in this section of the belt. I need to flatten this section of the base. Add a little more detail, a little more depth underneath this section of the belt. Work where you need to for a little bit. Take a look at things as you go. He's really starting to come together now. He's looking pretty good. So we're going to start adding some more detail here. Clean up these cuts all up under here. Make it look a little prettier. Get this section here that's hard to get with that knife underneath the left arm. And we're just smoothing out the top of that belt portion there. And uh, I like doing it with straight cut like this, but you can cut down to it like this right here and do that. But if you do this, you could wind up leaving more cuts in the base of the wood there. So I prefer doing it at a straight cut like this right here. My preferred method for this type of trim work. And you'll do what feels comfortable to you, you know, figure out what you like best and how it feels comfortable holding the knife and do that. Okay, now let's start putting some vertical lines on this base here. We're going to try to keep them evenly spaced. We're not going to pencil these in. We're just going to go ahead and push them in around about the same distance from each other, all the way around, straight up and down, just to add a pattern to this area. And going V cutting straight up from the bottom, you're not going to be able to get all the way to the bottom as, as much as you want to. We can do it from the other direction. And do another pass to get all the way down there. So we're just going to do the top half of these lines right now. The top three quarters, I should say, of these lines. And we'll do the bottom portion all the way down to the base. We come back around. And we'll take our detail knife to cut out all of these little 
things that are left over from the gouge being pushed into the vase. Like so, around this axe, a little tricky. And then get the detail knife to pop out all those little bits of fluff and little chips that are left over from the, the gouge. And just clean that up all the way around. All right, so now we can start working on the rest of that line on the head and the back of the neck here. So we can start by with some stop cuts here on the cheek to define that red stripe on him here. And work that up the back of the head. Same thing we've done elsewhere. You're not wanting to carve too much now. You don't want too much depth here. Just a little bit. Enough to define this is a separate portion. There we go. I'm using that detail knife on this one because having that thin blade allows you to cut into the end grain easier. It just slices right in. Whereas a thicker blade has a more difficult time. You have to push a lot harder to get it into the end grain there. Just continuing that line on down the back of the head and the back as well as we finish this portion of the lower neck. And of course, I can't help but bounce around some. You should be doing the same. If you see an area that needs improvement, just bounce over to that, take care of that. Showing my ADHD here by working on the ax now. That's okay, it's a good time to put that curve to the ax, right? An ax blade is sharp, so there's a, a convex kind of grind to the ax. We can kind of put that in and then curve the back of the section here out. See, I started carving one direction, I stopped, and I choked up with a knife and carved the other direction there for that because I know if I carved the wrong direction, it would just chip that blade off, and I don't want to lose that ax blade. So pay attention to your wood grain. Think about how you're carving. All right, so it's time to address those fingers, and I'm going to get out a little micro V gouge I have. This is a file tool, nice little veiner. I'll use that to just uh, put some lines there for the fingers, like so. Same thing for the right hand. And I'll use my knife to uh, elongate them and deepen them. That veiner just to define a little bit for me. And you probably probably do that with just the, uh, the pencil. And then do it with a knife like I'm doing here to define the rest of it. The V gouge in the front and then go around the, the fingers all the way to the back there. Make that pinky a little bit shorter. And spend a little time defining the fingers. V cuts between the fingers and then round off those edges. You don't want to have hard edges on a finger. Fingers aren't square. But you can just spend a little time. May look pretty good. And same thing on these knuckles here. Little V cuts in there to put a little depth to it. And then we'll round off those bases of the fingers. So it looks like they're wrapped around the haft of that shaft like that. And pretty good. Now we can start working on this belt here. We'll use this veiner. And we'll just put a little pattern here. Angled lines, like so. All the way around. That puts a little something interesting to it, you know? Something to draw the eye. And just flick off that excess. I have to go back through the knife and clean up those lines a little bit, and that's okay. A lot of things like that where you use a, a tool and you have to clean it back up with a knife. Knife is your general all-purpose tool. Lots of uses. 
we are about to have this fella done too all right let's do some more detail on this section here it's a little rough we're gonna clean that up first now we're just gonna add another line here along the base a little stop cut and then cut up to it all the way around just to add a little bit more interest a little bit more shadow right a little something more going on along the base that way it looks more interesting not as simple we'll curve that off too so the straight cut in and then carve up to it and snip it out all up the axe and the same thing on the other side carve back around to where you started And then go back through and just uh, curve off, curve off that line, smooth it out. All the way around. All right, now we're gonna work on that uh, shoulder strap again. We're gonna put some detail on that. We're gonna curve off that edge first. And we're gonna put some lines on this one, I think. Some vertical lines, come straight down like this. So straight down with the line of the carving. Now let's put some lines here, and then we'll use our knife to deepen, define them, and round them afterwards, which will make it look like little sections of leather comes down and that won't be exactly like the character in the game but it's one of those things you can do on stylized carving that will just add a little more detail so just doing little v-cuts here along the top in from one side out from the other and from one side in from the other and the same thing on the other side little v-cuts the edge of where those lines come in and that's going to really separate it out so that each one of those little sections of uh, this look like little different pieces. Of course, take a look at the overlay on the left and you can see what we're talking about, what I'm talking about. I actually like that enough. We're gonna go a little bit further up and you can see the, the overlay. We already did that, of course. We'll just put some more lines on there and we'll do the same thing. Be cut at the top, be cut at the bottom to add a little depth. Those will look like separate sections. And add something interesting the carving in a different area. Little details like this will take a mediocre carving and make it far better. So when we're done, what else can you add? What else can I look at this and put something else here, or something else there that might make it pop a bit more? And now we got all our detail work done. So just spend some time, go around your carving and clean up everything you can find. Any spot you see where it's a, a rough cut, go ahead and take your knife and clean that up a little bit. Um, look at all the joints, look at all the spots where you did stop cuts. Can you clean anything up over here? Use whatever tools you got available. Like I'm using this skew to clean up the, the rough cuts along this arm here and there. And then a lot of that's going to come clean when we wash this carving. So we're going to go ahead and take it to a sink in a moment and just really scrub it. And I'm going to scrub it under water for about probably two to three minutes by hand. And just a little bit of soap. Soak them down. And that water really helps lay down all those fuzzies and repair any imperfections that you left behind that you didn't get to. But uh, you'll see what that looks like momentarily. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, and here he is, all watered down, washed up, and you know, look, he looks buttery, doesn't he? Look at that. Clearly defined, flat plane style face. Just looks fantastic. And now we're going to go ahead and start painting him up next before we uh, do a little dark walnut Danish oil on him. Let's get right to the painting. Now, I'm not going to be watering down this at all. It's just going to be a, a red acrylic paint. This is just a Walmart brand, I think. True Red Rojo. And uh, I'm going to use a little detail brush. And we're going to go ahead and paint that paint line 
nice and easy what the paper is done beforehand and i'm going to have this sped up because you don't need to see every little bit of this this is pretty simple stuff i just want to make sure i include it in these types of videos that way you can see how i finish out a carving after the carving process for those who want to um, this is a really bright red and i chose a bright red specifically because <clears throat> after we do the black walnut stain it's going to really darken it and you're going to see that stain through the the red a little bit and it's going to look really nice really nice effect so once you get this done though give it a little while to dry first and i took a hair dryer to it for probably five or ten minutes to really dry out the carving because the carving was wet from getting scrubbed as well so don't just go right to the danish oil let it dry first before you do that because you're going to be buffing it immediately after putting the danish oil in out anyway so all right this is watco brand black walnut danish oil that i just put in a mason jar for easier storage for a smaller carving i would definitely dip him straight in but for a larger one you can't fit him in this jar so i'm using a pipe cleaner that i folded over just to apply all of it to the carving soak him in make sure you get into the end grain wipe him on nice and thick and then i'll wipe him off immediately with a paper towel and wipe and clean as best i can and at this point he's ready for a wax sealer for this stock carving i use men wax natural paste wax um, paste finish you can just melt it with a hair dryer or a lighter whatever you need to and then apply it on there nice and thick and then i spend maybe 10 minutes buffing this off with a brush that i have dedicated for this purpose and i use a brush to clean my carvings midway through but this brush i only use for buffing because the stain and the wax they will cake up in that brush and it's easier to apply it on there with the same brush works just fantastic but just make sure you have a brush that's dedicated to this if you do this process the longer you buff the more of a luster you'll bring out and it can really shine and it can really look beautiful when you get in there on those cracks and crevices look at this look how those cuts really get shown off now i love that look and effect and it dulls that red a little bit the right way i think so that's what we wind up with folks and there's the money shot of the finished product looking fantastic so that was a lot of fun folks thank you so much for tuning in uh please don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and uh check me out on instagram follow along if you follow me on instagram and i see that you're a woodcarver i'm going to follow back don't forget to stay awesome folks